Hi, I'm Dronius and welcome back to the channel. Taiko no Tatsujin, otherwise known as Taiko Drum Master, is a rhythm game series that's easy to pick up like Friday Night Funkin', but can be challenging as Osu. Released back in 2001 as a Japanese exclusive arcade cabinet across the country, the two notes you have to hit are the ones in red and blue. Hit the insides of the drum for the red notes, and hit the rims for the blue ones. The long and yellow balloon notes require you to rapidly hit the drums as fast as possible. And although not hitting them doesn't count as a missed note, keep in mind you won't be given extra points if you choose not to hit them. The objective is to pass the clear gauge or get a full combo without missing a single note by the end of the song. This series has mostly been a Japanese exclusive series and didn't get a lot of release in the West. It wasn't until 2018 when the PS4 and Switch versions of the games were given an international release. Finally putting the Taiko games on the map for Americans, at least for the first time since 2004. So in this video, I want to take a look at the series and why I think it should be well known a bit more than before. I've been aware of these games since I was little and while I've never been good at the game, I consider myself to be decent at best. And for the sake of this video, I'll be taking a look at the Nintendo Switch version since it's easier for me to record some footage. Now, the main beauty for any rhythm game is how the player can decide how difficult the game can be. But compared to things like Beat Mania, Osu, Dance Dance Revolution, and yes, even Guitar Hero, among many others, Taiko Drum Master is more on the easier side for its difficulty. Each song is divided into four modes, easy, normal, hard, or demon slash expert mode. Some songs have an ultra expert difficulty, and depending on the song in question, it can really be a struggle to go through if you're not good at the game. The stars on each one indicate how hard it can be as well, with the highest being up to 10. So if you want to have an easier and peaceful experience, just pick an easy difficulty with the lowest star rating and you'll have a casual time. If you want to cramp up every muscle in your arms or get arthritis if you're using touchscreen mode on the Switch version, choose a really hard song and pray to god you can reach the clear gauge before it ends. In terms of music, I can't really play most of them due to copyright, but there's 7 categories that they're divided in. There's pop, anime, vocaloid, variety, classical, video games, and Namco originals. If you're an avid listener of Japanese songs, you'll recognize some of them on the spot. But even if you've never heard of the music outside of Taiko, each one has a variety of ways to experience them in a casual run. Plus, most of them are good bangers. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to say about the main mode everyone's gonna play these games for. If you're playing Taiko on console, there's a handful of minigames to play. No surprise, they're all rhythm based and a lot of fun, but there's only so much you can do with all of them before you get bored. Online mode is also here, where you can compete against other players in trying to get a better score than your opponent. Although do keep in mind that the higher you climb the ladder, the stronger your opponents will be and these people don't fuck around, so be careful. DLCs are a thing in this game, but I have one major complaint about it. When you buy these games, you get around 73 songs, which is a lot for $50. But if you're a decent player like me, you can easily blaze through them all in half a day without taking breaks, resulting in a quick burnout and it causes people to drop the game entirely. Once a month, Bandai Namco, the devs behind the series, will release a song pack containing at least 5-7 to seven songs. Each one goes for about $1 to $7 a piece. But if you were to buy every single DLC pack that's currently out to complete your track list, you'll need to spend $450, that's right, $450 for a little more than 300 songs. For this reason alone, I can't really recommend Drum and Fun for the Switch. It's way too expensive for an average player to afford something like that and you're better off spending your hard earned money elsewhere. However, there's another Taiko game coming to the platform that has a better deal when it comes to content. At the time of this video, Taiko Drum Master Rhythm Festival was announced in a recent Nintendo Direct and it's set to release sometime this year. There were two big reveals that got me hyped for this game. The first one is that there's a built-in training mode which allows you to do any part of a song and practice it for as much as you want. I can't tell you how many times I've messed up a combo string on a song and had to restart from the beginning just to have another go. With this, I can skim through that particular section and do it over and over again until I get it right. Plus, it saves a lot of time and backtracking. The second reveal being that there'll be a subscription service that'll give you access to over 500 songs at launch. Sure, it might not sound good until you remember about the $450 price tag for all the song packs. I highly doubt that the devs will charge you that much cash for a huge catalog again. While the exact price or longevity of the subscription hasn't been revealed, I bet the service will be around $10 to $15 once every 3 or 5 months. Which sounds pricey, but it's way better than last time. If you plan on getting any Taiko game, I recommend either waiting for Rhythm Festival to release on Switch, or purchasing the PS4 slash Xbox Game Pass version. If you want to get the first Switch game and not wait any longer, then you can purchase it. Though keep in mind that collecting all of the DLC packs will be expensive, or you can select which ones you want separately. Overall, I'm happy that Taiko Drum Master is getting more attention from other countries outside of Japan. Its basic gameplay makes it easily accessible to anyone who's never played a rhythm game, 
while also providing a challenge for those who want a little more hair on their balls. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the first Switch game along with the PS4 version were the first games Americans got since the 2004 PS2 game that was given an English dub. And there's a reason as to why this is the only game to receive that treatment. Because this voice acting is so bad, it makes the One Piece 4 Kids English dub sound like a work crafted by God in comparison. Listen up! I'm telling you, those people only took us in to capture us. Wait, 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 wait. Luffy! 